All right. So, anyway. so one thing that we're speaking to is on the subject of, uh, let's say, uh, many different uh, available uh, tasks. And uh, in this case, identifying them and then prioritizing them. So it's a very interesting sequence uh, as it relates to micro tasks, midterm and long term. And so you and I just did a, a micro, but uh, the uh, goals of the group uh, short term are not micro tasks. They're oh, just short. Because sure, sure. basically I got brought into it through a micro task situation. You know, when when Jesse basically when I realized we, they're struggling with this video translation, I was like, man, I've got this software, you know, but I don't really like, I'm not necessarily an expert in language translation, but I don't speak any other language or anything. I'm just thoughtful, you know? <laughs> I do. And there's more questions than answers and they continue to surface and that's okay. So right? that's, <laughs> part of our goal is to scope, scope, scope. Now that's not on our roadmap, obviously, but that is within the, uh, the culture or the breed of our team. That's why I loved the way our team came together because it was easy. Uh, it spoke right. to the typical uh, kind of internal conversation that you're having and sharing with me. So right. we can e we can easily dialogue uh, rather than uh, get uh, get swept up in the music. Right. Because no, I, it, I totally see that because I yeah. it's like I fell right in and you understood exactly what I was thinking. You're already thinking about it, and I'm like, cool. You know, I already looked at the Pomelo pitch for Translate and stared at it for quite some time. <laughs> oh, yes. And keep in mind, that's a pitch for a, uh, a, uh, a small portion of the larger foundation. Right. Well, that, and, I, and I totally think that, like, with, with this API tool, if we start packaging it right with the right other kind, because the way I look at it is right now we're dealing with sort of like a moving target in terms of, what solutions we provide may not necessarily like things change a lot, you know. It's just Can like you get it on paper. With that, are you able to get it on paper? Well, you know, I was just I was just about to start mapping out everything today because I have so many different things going through my head. I need you're to doing pretty good with the chat. Uh, so I grabbed like two or three good ideas already. Uh, Oscar, mm -hmm. same, and uh, we're gonna go three D virtual between. Uh, uh, myself and uh, you know our our other member, and so That's we'll. Awesome. Uh, I I love to join on board with that. I'm just at a limited uh, constraint of budget and hardware. But yeah, and it, it's exciting uh, finding out where we are in in all of it, and with this spreadsheet or your input, say with these three good ideas or four or whatever, and Oscar same. Uh, all of those are candidates on the board. Uh, we're all. Uh, uh, we're basically exploring how fractally works. We're exploring how human coordination works as a function of governance. So basically, if you crack human coordination, you crack governance. If you crack governance, then you crack basically doing whatever, being able to preserve whatever rights you consider are right. Right, right. And so along that line, what I what I've been cooking on in my I'm like just spinning around in my head is this whole thing with the EOS nation and the onboarding of junior developers and possibly contacting Vincent and suggesting the idea or just looking at what level of openness that he may have into expanding it to where we're not just contacting them to get involved with a developing smart contract, but if you want to learn about and test out fractal democracy, because you know Chuck McDonald was a big proponent of using the even election and open sourcing it, what better environment than with students to where they so can- So what, what, what I would ask- properly. You know, we could, yeah. we could do a dual purpose. Like you want to you get involved with fractally, you want to get involved with even elections, like having a roadmap to allow these students from every language in the world to have so a here, pathway here's, in the US. Here's what we're, 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 we're wanting to do as a team, as, it, as it's re a recommendable from me and in, in my early input on us and what we're doing, uh, limited to uh, uh, almost almost brainstorm, uh, but effectively implementing a brainstorm. So you'd say kind of suggestions slash recommendations. But bottom line is what we want to do when we are able to uh, bring these information items to the larger communities, because there's many, many uh, within this, you got 
you know, Chuck and what he's doing, the Eden, the fractally, the translation pieces, the bees, all this stuff. We want to put a brand on every single thing we do that says EOS Translation Foundation. Because if we say to Chuck, your problem is really communication <laughs> or whatever, it keeps boiling down to a very core element of, un of opening up the bandwidth of our original mission. Increasing right. bandwidth across communities. Okay, different language speaking communities, but that's okay. We're not the communication foundation, but we, we could be. So I, I just want to say well, that that need could arise and, and be demonstrated and need, need to be filled by somebody. <laughs> yeah. And if we did, it would probably confuse people. Hey, we're the communication right. foundation. Yeah. So we got a translation foundation that starts to be able to, you and I can put this stuff in the group. And what I want to do is I want to plug it into a tokenization remunerative model so we all begin to receive back value for our contributions yeah no i totally i love that i just don't know how it works um we're gonna build it that's why we're testing fractally we want this thing to go to market in a year we want it to be on a market and we want people to buy the most productive groups and we're going to be those <laughs> and you want to hear something funny side note i um you know about the trust evm right very well okay well, last night I was on the new uh, Telegram channel and there was an Ethereum developer who joined it and he was asking questions because he wanted to deploy a smart contract on the testnet. He got booted from the group because of the fuck uh, Rose, the anti-bot bot, the bot that's supposed to, pre supposed to prevent spam bots, ended up booting this guy because he was asking, posting too many comments and posting links. It reminds me of something that happened to me. And so he gets booted from the group and he's still trying to ask questions. And so I'm like, can we let him back in? And I'm like tagging Zach and Jeeves and whoever's admin. Well, what ends up happening is we can't get him in, but through that process, I actually, he actually got his faucet thing working. And he was, he was saying it's real, it's a lot faster from his, just how it feels compared to Ethereum. And so the so original objective of ours to onboard a new developer was a success? Well, you know, um, the, I mean, as of last night, this guy knew nothing really about EOS because I, because of what happened, I started messaging him directly and tried to help get him back into the channel or answer questions or relay, you know, screenshots back and forth or whatever. But it turns out the guy is like, doesn't really know much about what's going on with EOS. He just heard about hey. the EDM thing. Yeah, I hear you all day. That's a great story. Hey, wow, it's interesting. can you put that as an item on a, uh, a notes list for Saturday? Uh, what's the actual item? <laughs> what the, I the item is basically you, you, you ran patterns like a motherfucker for a potential developer uh, for uh, onboarding. Yeah. yeah, in fact, you know, the thing is, is um, I don't know where you're at, but I have a friend who is an um, a, a excellent uh, coder and very well-rounded, good thinker. And I was talking to him about this translation team and seeing if the need comes up and we could use someone like you, you know, or if you want to get involved, I'd rather get you involved earlier so you don't have to catch up with, you know. And he he of, falls into a candidacy of a, a various, very important person that we would make our sixth member. A fifth, a fifth is coming as a German uh, for, from what we we're building. We talked about, everybody kind of concurred. It's, it's a go. Right. And uh, this guy you're talking about would be a sixth, no question. There might be a hard stop at eight. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you said, the smaller, the better. You well, there's I mean? no need for redundancy is the way I look at it. Just be efficient and not create more variables and hassles than need be. Yeah, so how about what's the verdict on your friend? Would you want him to join or not? Oh, gosh, if I could get him in, 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 involved with us, absolutely. But the thing is, is he's a real cynic and he's very... Uh, uh, like, um, I don't know. What does he think about our uh, four main uh, uh, pro, uh, 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 purpose uh, items? He doesn't even, he's not even at a place to, uh, like, I haven't even had a, a time to communicate with him. We have a time set up on Monday where I'm going to go over what I have been doing with you guys and just showing him the uh, back end interface for that. Because basically what I was looking at is, hey, let's build another, uh, another, um, front end cloud hosted translation thing based on the uh, translate me API, like the thing I'm using to make it better. <laughs> you know, like if it, 
is it i don't know because i don't know what you guys got in works or what plans but oh yeah and that's where i'll uh tell you for now a year uh, going on a year and a half i've been working with translate me in order to first just look at what they've got because i hear neural network and i hear uh tokenized rewards and i go yes yes you're on done done right Thank you. because there's there, there, that stuff doesn't exist okay it's brand new it's great so um then we move into a place of, hey guys, I think we can work into funding toward say end of last year uh, because everything was getting crystallized in terms of funding streams. Okay. So then uh, time went by and I tested their, their uh, functions and the, my tests personally were not just good, they were, they were great. So what I ended up doing was communicating with a few different language speaking groups through what they put together in terms of just workflow and it worked really well now realize these guys are in the long tail of building so their algorithms that i tested 90 percent they were 90 percent of them were, were google apis 10 percent was their neural network product their neural network product was fine their google api was was an interesting leverage while they're building so they have this flexibility if you're following. Right. So it's sort of like whatever things we don't have handled, we can just sub out to Google. Essentially. I wanted to see WTF is going on with getting what I want, which is and Han and Max Cho and company answered my question when they told me, Mark, I feel your heart in your words. And I was like, Okay, that's great. In other words, if I if we went and brought something before someone, I would I would say we've got all the bases covered for just what they want to 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 solve their problem. I'm not talking about bringing it all together and having a design finished product. I'm just talking about where are we? Okay, it works. So I said, okay, so they got the band together on the translate me side. And what I did was I uh, I can't remember the exact whole sequence of all the stories, but eventually uh uh, I, 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 we, I really fired away on Palmetto One and we got hard pushback as we are not a public good, we are a something something company. And I'm going, okay, noted, not, I don't agree. And we went three rounds with, uh, with Palmetto groups and all that stuff. So keep in mind, I don't, I don't mind, hey, it would have been a feather in our hat to have Palmetto One set up like now we are set up with Palmetto Two. So Palmetto Three is the big one. And uh, EOS B's with ENF funding is a big one. So as far as just the funding goes, it looks like that's been the big, that's one of the big pie pieces that is that is solved. The integration into EOS project is a second one. We got, at we have now three of those already underway. <laughs> we only want 10 right now. We, we don't want more than 10. So I'm not going crazy. I went with Aaron Cox and a few other people here and there to start proposing things going on because we want, so what are those three? That's a uh, chatbot was the first one. Thanks. To, hats off to Kevin. He jumped right in and said, hey, let's fuck around. And uh, I've tested his stuff and it was interesting on a, uh, a prototype level. And then, uh, you know, very basic, not alpha, just prototype. And so basically uh, we went to uh, uh, recently, uh, boom, boom, the exact evolution of it. I don't want to get caught in the details, but uh, Patrick Nova Crypto jumped all over this. We did within one week, it was integrated. Uh, well, at least a good integration prove out. Yesterday, it was integration prove out was finalized. So well, in other awesome words, because because basically Patrick's a coder too. He built this thing and it made it super easy. There's no one in the way to you know have to ask or do or. This is what uh, we're we're learning, and this is why I go Patrick. Patrick, I I have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, I love Patrick. He's. A, He's a little, he's a little overboard sometimes, but we need that, you know? <laughs> yeah, it helps. And, and so yesterday morning, uh, he and I went back and forth and then uh, I, I, it, we weren't communicating. I say, uh, well, we don't have, the infrastructure for communication was failing and also our loss in translation had failed. Already we burned up like 10 minutes or something. I repeated three times or something. He dropped off. I couldn't hear him. He's so, and so it yeah. didn't matter. We, we made progress. Right. And right around then, we brought a third per party, which is the, the uh, chief technology officer for Translate Me. Uh, and Patrick was upset. That? And that's Rav Neat. You'll okay. meet him Tuesday. Okay. Okay. 
So now you're caught up on, at least you know enough to be dangerous. Well, EOS Bs is, EOS Bs is the second integration item. Now that's a big one. Yeah, dude, that's huge. Listen to this. Jesse and I and Ryan and Ravni, we met last week. Problem solved. What happened was Jesse saw something he could use, which we, we all thought this would come together and it did. Cool. So, so we're done with that. That, that, that is, that is consider it launched. You know, the, the collaboration integration effort is already underway and, and your, your YouTube come out of the middle of nowhere and was folded right into that. You even joined a meeting, I think. And, and I was like, okay, okay, this is great. That's exactly perfect. And the amazing, the efficiency is I asked Dan Larimer a year ago, a year, year ago, I said, are we going to notice, do you think, a bump in productivity metric that's going to be definitive, distinct, whatever, 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 whatever? All 13 people, 20 people that, that answered on that EOS community thing said, yes, unanimous uh, metric for increased productivity visible. Because I want to see if the leverage of everybody's value in this human coordination solution actually leads to mystifying productivity. I don't know yet still, but <laughs> meters are, are fucking, the meters are going like this. And I'm like, right. because I just threw everything at this team and it, look at you, look what you did. You, you plowed into this. There's, there's, there's hyper productivity. At, so, uh, you know, one of the things about me that you, that I, I didn't really, don't really tell a lot of people about me. I, I like to sort of remain anonymous or mysterious. But, you know, I went to school at Cal Berkeley. I'm a trained mediator. And I used to be a Chamber of Commerce president for two terms in Alaska. So one of my passions in life is bridging cultures and understanding the differences between factions and groups and creating dialogue and innovating ideas into circulation and whatever. And so a lot of the time that I spent in EOS was just me trying to get my bearings over what is going on here. And what way can I provide value? And is this worth my time? And I'm and all the, the whole time along, I've just been hooked. I just can't get away from EOS. You know, it's just like, it's too curious of a thing to me. There's too much stuff going on. There's yeah. too much opportunity. There's too yeah. many, too many roads and paths that may not be explored if I don't jump in right now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I'm excited about it. And so that was sort of funny to me because I was asking myself, like, what value do I provide as an individual to this team? Do you and see you know, our number four? Did you see our number four purpose? I added a fourth. Uh, yeah, I forgot what it was already. Uh, it is to discover our individual value. Right. Well, no, because when you wrote that, I, I started asking myself that question. And it's like, you know, I don't always, like a lot of times I like to act intuitively and shoot through the hip. And other times I'll be very introspective and, and just think a lot about, you know, my inner motivations and behavior. But so far with this EOS thing, um, I, I've lately been following a lot of hunches and my hunches tend to pay off. Like, I don't always understand why I decide to get interested in something or why I'm spending time focusing on it. But I, I generally find that I've been rewarded for how I go about my madness. And so when it came to this group, I felt like, you know what? I'm not sure the exact, like, I, I don't know if I could enumerate the exact value that I provide to this group, but I can say that in this moment, just just the energy and the timing and and just sort of being a catalyst for the dialogue is 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 important i think and whatever role that i play in time i might not be creating that much value for the group but right now is a good time for me not to you know disappear and to continue to support the group and you know and maybe as time goes on you know the needs evolve or what value i pr provide is lessened and there's something that's greater like i'm not I'm like, the way I looked at it was like, man, the best way I can serve this group is making myself unnecessary and unneeded, doing such a good job in participation, but all the needs and wants of who needs to be involved is the best people are in it, doing the best thing. And I decided, we all decided it's not me. <laughs> that would be my best contribution. <laughs> what, what, did you, what did that, this is on me, you said? No, that... That it's not me. That if, if I did my job well, I would not even be in this group because I would find people better than me to be in this group. <laughs> you know, because there's too many other interests that I have. You know, but right now I don't see anyone better. You know what I'm saying? Right now I feel like, you know, it's a, it's it's a great opportunity to also for me to get involved at this early juncture and such a critical component that sort of is like a, a glue of this ecosystem infrastructure. You know? Yes.
Yes, thank you so much. I, I, I can relate. Uh, yeah, and in fact, the, uh, the, 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 the one concept that's, that's new to me is uh, the, uh, the best part is no part. If I've really done my job, I'm gone or something like that. But I, I get it. I, I don't drill well, that much. It's the, but, it's, the, it's the whole principle of teaching someone how to fish versus feeding them a fish. Yes. So whatever value I create, I believe I can reproduce in another if they have an open mind and that they can improve upon, you know, but it's sort of like what, what resource expenditure or level of interest do you have in playing this game, you know? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like, do, do I think that I am the number one best person to be on a team for language translation for EOS? Well, as far as I know, given the data available to me, probably, you know, that's hilarious. I was going to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as time goes on, if we do a good job, me with my marketing, us with the language translation, then we're going to flesh out more people and bring more people to the table, more creative energy, more intelligent thinkers, people that will push. You're going to be the subject matter experts. Right, right, right. Yeah, pretty much. We'll be the legacy guys, right? You know, like been there from the beginning. <laughs> you almost already are, man. Because uh, translate me and these integration efforts you asked about is just one, one part. Right, right. So you asked originally, hey, what's going on? And I introduced you with the most kinetic side of it. But the non-kinetic side of it is almost captured in our mission and in our quick notes list for our project management piece already. It's like, hey, we want to do all these things. And immediately, we want to kind of go ahead and stand up as an identity. We kind of just did that in like no time without any inertia. Right, right. You know, you jumped right in. I loved it. And it took about three or four rounds. It's fine. It makes sense, you know, but there was a lot of potential for confusion. Oscar was all about it. And then fella come in and then now it's going to be a fifth which speaks German and multilingual assumption, but we'll yeah, see. Well, that's funny because I'll tell you what, this whole time along, I have been so cautious about getting involved with anything EOS. Like I was, I was afraid to even be inducted as an Eden member. Not me because I'm I got the in it for the tech side of me that's real strong. I don't give a fuck. So I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I want to use, 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 use. But as far as commitment, 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 and getting buried, no. Right, right. Well, see, that was the thing because I was I was of the mindset, wow, what if some weird thing happened? I joined Eden, went to the election, and got a bill like the chief delegate. Then I'd feel obligated to like do my role, but I would be all like, I don't want to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, you know, this is too much. I'm not ready for this yet. <laughs> That's why I didn't run the first time. The second time I did run, but I would not have wanted to be a, a chief delegate, but I, I would have accepted the role. I could have done it. And so I just decided to do it uh, on behalf of the uh, Translate Me uh, pa Pomelo pitch, because that's what really they want, just brute funding. And I said, if I got elected original, I would fund myself uh, only. But if I got up to a chief delegate, I didn't get that out in the pitch. But basically, yeah, I would have taken like 10% and moved the rest over to the project right. and fund those guys because they they got on none, no funding forever, basically. Ha ha. <laughs> Right. So what do you think about um, ENF grant framework? Um, I think it's excellent and great and wonderful. I think the trust branding, the e EVM trust branding is wonderful. I think the treasury as, as defined by the ENF is wonderful. I think every single thing they're doing, it's, it's precision. It's perfect. And if it's imperfect, I think they're swarming and adapting things in a way that's uh, just just brute force through being brilliant, but Dan Larimer's working on the coordination side of it that will truly bring it all together. Ultimately, I believe, I believe that coordination is going to uh, be a huge strength to uh, what uh, Eve's LaRose's know-how and experience and, and, and EOS's integrity with the technology and the legacy from all these challenges and surviving in the heart of this community. All that stuff is going to be tied hugely together through these accountability tools like Eden and uh, Fractally, in my opinion. So this really strong centralized ENF group is really strong and centralized, but I think that they are uh, executing perfectly, which was the plan. It was to get a quick, really solid centralized entity to just get this identity rolling because we never really had a community identity. That's the bottom line. And we just, we just three years of no identity. So, so we, we just, there was too decentralized. Right. So what's, what's translate me's position on uh, putting together a grant application with through the ANF grant framework, right? They, have they uh, right now, right, right now uh, uh, they, they uh, 
it's it's a it's a tricky thing to speak to. So I would be very, I would try to be very clear and say that the uh, that there's there's three things going on. I believe Jesse is going to be able to get translate me funding through the NF. Number one. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is. Uh, we are going to hopefully be able to uh, grow as a foundation that can work into a larger scope of, um, of funding streams. So I spoke to Ryan uh, an hour or two ago, whatever, and I said, you know, Dan Larimer uh, was in my breakout room and, and I, I turned his head because it, I don't have a video of that, okay? I, I reached out to all those guys. I exhausted it today. If I did, you'd see. I said, boom, 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 boom. And Larimer goes, and just starts like paying attention rather than doing a bunch of shit in the background. And so wait, boom, 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 boom. You were in Larimer's breakout room. Interesting. Okay, I didn't realize that. That's why the modest amount of togetherness that we brought together was so uh, great because uh, it was like... Um, I don't know, day one of being able to say something. Uh, I said some stuff with Pomelo, but not as a team. So we're, we're now able to kind of say, oh yeah, we're doing these things or whatever, you know? So I quickly put the list down, said every single, I said, look, I, I captured, I, I spoke very fast, said, hey guys, for the sake of time, I just want to put this thing in front of you. I put a picture up. If you open it and you're able to open it, uh, you'll see what I'm literally about to just walk right through. So they all just kind of shuffled and started opening. And Brandon Fancher, you know him? Uh, he's he's the right hand man. He we had made, an election essentially. Yeah. He, so he and I, we he, me, John Williamson, and Translate Me met. And Brandon Fancher was like, "This is a great system." Because I was like, at least communication, right? Forget across language communication, but it it was a bullseye, you know. So Fancher's a hundred percent. He's, so, he's, he's a bright guy, and he's also pretty good with people. I realize most programmers aren't. <laughs> totally, totally. He's amazing. He's like a fucking demi god up there. He's right. just like, he's like, hey guys, I got this stuff, man. I got this stuff, you know. Don't worry, we just do this. He's great. I've loved it. Him and Brandon Lovejoy, but uh, that's the community. It's the I, that's the identity that's emerging. And so we talk about it. And uh, so what, how do you step into that? <laughs> well, you know, um, kind of, I think what we're doing, I, I think you understand probably enough right now, but I wanted to clarify the, the, the players. And that is the, the translation foundations here translates me is here and everything else that the community needs is here. And these things are going to be working out on this level. So right now we got that whole like tech side kind of rolling where Translate me is doing great. And what what we what we don't have is uh, that our own team's pipeline through media that you brought up, our uh, a project management system that I'm penciling, a uh, a uh, an aha with this community group. We haven't even talked to really Oscar's cool, but uh, we hadn't we hadn't moved into the Spanish communities. So, I mean, we're, we're just, we have nothing but moving, but we got to make sure we know where we're at in that kind of like organizational uh, mission because uh, otherwise uh, it can get confusing real quick. So uh, the funding's a part of it. The people are a part of it. The tech is a part of it. The, the, uh, the actual philosophy and long-term understanding of, of what EOS is kind of turning into representing is, is, uh, is, is a part of it. Because you gotta, you gotta, you gotta blow everybody's mind if you explain what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, for me, I, when the when the three prime factuals thing came out, and I saw the immense value that the language translation role would provide in just our ecosystem, it started getting me to think of um, like ways. Because you know, one of the things I was curious about translate me is it basically um, this. Uh, it says. Dedica uh, deploy dedicated server with instant translation API that can be utilized on any online platform or application with turnkey access at no cost of usage. 
no cost of usage. So do you really mean no cost of usage ever? For yeah, no, 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 careful. Uh, okay. that's, that's our public good and our offering. Right, right. Are these free, free APIs. So uh, what, what their model is for funding is about, it's a, about a 20th of the cost of those Google uh, translate services and such. Uh, will you give me just about like two minutes or maybe only 60 seconds? I got to find this fucking pan so I can get this bread in the oven. Yeah, go ahead. Hang I'm going to get a coffee. Hang on. I'm going to get a coffee. All right, cool. I'm back. FYI. All right, I'm back. All right, sweet. Yeah, I, uh, I'm still going to wrap up this uh, get the bread set up thing. But uh, be kind of. All right, uh, so uh, so AOS chatbot, Patrick and MindWeb, and then the bees. Uh, YouTube video up, up, up to 10 up to 10 projects right now we want as demos uh, yesterday we want it we want it we want it as fast as possible so uh, uh, we're, we're actually going there and uh, we're working on a pomelo 3 uh, that's for translate me not the foundation uh, I hadn't considered putting in for the foundation you know maybe uh, we, we'll work on our own funding streams at some point right now I don't I don't care about that fractally is good enough for me just just going in and getting yeah, I'm not really worried about it at this point yeah <clears throat> So um, part of what I what role I want to do in the future is onboard new users and new business developer developers or people with ideas that have want to build on the EOS you know blockchain or in the ecosystem or whatnot. And I actually have a contact uh, Samara, who you may know has actually participated in the fracturing meeting. She's now partnered up with a business in Ojai that does a satellite live streaming. They used to do events 
it's called DSI Live. They went defunct in like 016 or something, but basically they want to bring back their infrastructure and she wants to do event promotions and she's actually getting prepared to promote EOS, to co-promote EOS with her spiritual indigenous um, consciousness shift feel. And she had a Pomelo pitch that never got submitted. But my, the long and short of it is, is that like I was already talking to their guy. Hey, do you guys have a solution for your live events for language translation and captioning? You know, like I'm already asking him. And next thing you know, he's asking me, who am I? And what is EOS? And, you know, blah, 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 blah. And now oh, we're looking into crypto projects, you know. You know, so next and he's all of a sudden talking to me about on a completely different topic, but interested now in EOS. Hey, and let me add on to this, okay? And that is that uh, about a year ago, when I first started talking with Translate Me, they said they were deciding whether they want to build on Neo or EOS. They decided to build on Neo because Neo gave them thirty thousand dollars. I say fine. Well, we found out two four weeks ago when we deep dove on next phases that really what we want is users to train their algorithm. And so what they're going, we believe we will be doing is integrating to have a full and all and all out straight up machine generation, all everything that's preserved, nothing lost on EOS before Pomelo season three. So I hope. Whoa, really? Thank you. So, so let's let's keep that kind of. I mean, I know we're recording this and everything. That's why yeah, recording. No, we don't want to put this one up public. Well, I'm looking for I'm looking for reasons why we wouldn't record everything. Just well, I'm explore. glad that you're thinking about that because I don't always uh, know what things are sensitive unless you know the red. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and so uh, I'm not overly sensitive, but I am sensitive to heedlessness. So that's the best hey. interpretation. You know what I'd like to do with these videos? I'd like to put them on YouTube under my EOS open stage thing. I could even make a playlist or whatever, or another channel, but I want to make them private. So you have to have a Gmail account that we can authorize access to. So make it like on demand where someone goes, oh, I heard this was really good. I want to watch it. I'm reading these things about it, but, you know, like make it exclusive. You know, and if it gets out, that's fine. If, you, yeah. if you're that opportunistic that you watched our private ass videos, you got you permission. Get, yeah, you went to the trouble. <laughs> and then you can have the information. Yeah, we're going to have a translation on EOS function. I want to, uh, you know what? Other folks know that uh, also. So this is not, this is just an exercise. You know, it's not like this is critical so-and-so. There's a few other people that are up and up on that. So right. this is all this is all brand new. Uh, but uh, uh, the thing is, is I said that very slowly and weirdly for a very good reason. And you caught right on. You're like, damn, <laughs> that's awesome. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, if we can, so that's, so there's about 10 things in the fire. And I think that's why we're talking today is we wanted to go back to the original what's going on. And I think this might be helpful for Oscar. Uh, right now, uh, we've been recording for like X number of minutes, say 20 to 25 minutes. That's reasonable for if Oscar felt like really quickly watching what a description of kind of what we're doing, but he could fast forward if he wants. But basically, this is a bit of that private archive that's pretty notable. Well, we, we, here's, here's the deal, man. If we get these videos posted, captioned, translated, we should be able to search the text of the videos to go, hey, what video was it that we talked about this idea or, or just even making a documentary of how this process began? We have all this footage that we could it could be very valued content, you know, even though initially it may just sit there for some time, you know. It's brilliant. I want it on our on our uh, project management sheet, what you've just said. Uh, I want I want that because I think what we're trying to do, that this is a perfect candidate of the subtleties that I have not listed out that are far, far beyond no, the- I'm talking uh, about this from a future marketing standpoint. I'm, I'm looking at the yeah. these timelines and going, what's the value content in here? Yeah. What, could, what clips can I pull out? What can I use as a soundbite in an audio mix? I want to make EOS music. I want to get in Sing Joy. And Felix and all these content creators, like I want to do so much stuff, like it's it's mind-boggling. But right now, I want to stay focused with language translation. But what I really need to do is just get all these ideas out on paper, so everyone else that has these same ideas can, can contribute to them. So we're I'm not waiting for the ENF or Fractally or anyone to help build something, you know, for me to do that. I want to I want to build something myself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No. And, and, you know, I think that's what, what we call, you know, the analog to digital uh, function of a modulator. That's really what we're doing is we're taking our value. And I'm a, 
I would consider myself a, a, an ambassador for this planet. And in that post, uh, in the post uh, that wherein I serve, it is to bring the value uh, to the working level in the manifested world here on this planet. So he starts asking a bunch of bullshit questions. I get it, it's tricky, but bottom line is if we can put money back in the pockets of the trees, that's what I want. Now, <laughs> how are we doing it? Well, the tokenization analog to digital is a big deal because that allows the trees bank accounts to stack up without without them having to like go like like fight a war or something you know they just they just continue to exude value and people reward that value so you see because i know that everyone's trying to think about that since tesla but uh the the blockchain world understands the a to d but it's all actually being integrated right now with larimer is probably maybe one of the closest i've kind of seen to that but i asked him directly uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago on on the channel the big wide channel i well, actually it was our breakout room it was a different one <laughs> i've been in his room i think three times man no shit but i asked him i said well i didn't ask him but i, I did say i'm interested in the bank accounts of trolls and the bank accounts of other challenging entities i want to oh, see i want to yeah, see no, how no, you're getting into a big point i'm uh, keep going i want to hear what you say <laughs> i want to see how many people value the shadow the, the the dark crypt that nobody ever wants to enter, but that holds all of the keys. Well, you know what? I think you're really on to something there because it's my personal belief that a lot of these independent looking individuals, fake accounts and scam bots are actually all orchestrated by a very intelligent machine learning AI based thing that manipulates uh, human behavior. <laughs> and it's, it's part of a well-funded operation. Personally, I'm operating from that perspective like exploring that possibility. So do you remember what happened at the beginning of last meeting? Were you there? Well, uh, the lot the has happened at the beginning of last week, like a thousand different things. Well, the pre-meeting, the, the porn shots and the, the, did you see what happened? Okay, so I'm trying to trace down who are the users. I want to figure out who are these users. Like, are these people? Are they, are these uh, human bad actors or are they automated bad actors? And I was like <laughs> messaging Rexler like, can we trace their IPs? Can we get a handle on it? Because <coughs> if we don't capture that data, you know, I think we're 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 at a disadvantage <coughs> because we need to protect ourselves from these from these Doug, threats. Check this out. Listen, you won't believe this. I fucking message right then, and I did not mean a double entendre. I did not mean a double meaning. I said, "This is excellent for hardening." Yeah, and I that I called it a civil attack. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I did not mean that in a in a sexual joke until I reread it, and I said, "Cause right. you can't, you said something," and I said, "Oh no, I've i and I can't delete that comment." And I said, "The network, you know, I, I didn't mean to say." Ha -ha. Right, 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 right. No, no, this is well. You and I are very, <coughs> <coughs> very excellent uh, in terms of um, uh, be able to you know triangulate into the what what it is we're interested in. So basically, um, here we are uh, at a place where I rarely submit and exchange information. So I usually it's very internal. Uh, but uh, so that the bottom line is, what are the bank accounts of these these entities going to look like? Because my thing is, they have a very high value to me. I want an A to D system that's actually going to materialize that value, so I can actually see uh, if if say we're able to. Um, atone uh, or, or, or basically um, accommodate for uh, uh, turn to have tea with the forbidden, well, that's, that's along the inheritance that, that the singularitarians speak of when they use the word abundance. And Musk said it twice in the last month. The future is abundance. Well, careful to get to abundance, how to navigate uh, an engineer's guide to navigating an apocalypse. Ha ha. I don't really like to use that word because of this, because of the stuff, but what, what it really means is how to, how to basically uh, be a guy that uh, like uh, have, I, I usually say high, uh, high, like um, dominance through wealth, 
high dominance through intellect and thirdly high personality or winning personality ha ha those three would be your things you want to maximize if you feel like you want to take a nice walk about through uh, through the this transformative future that we all talk about <laughs> but you don't even really going to need the money and intelligence turns into ignorance quick when you become the, the the forrest gump who's ready for anything very adaptable guy hi oh let him in you know it's like the ant and the grasshopper the ant worked all the time and then the grasshopper need a place to stay so i don't even have food they say well First off, fuck you. <laughs> but second off, come in, enjoy a warm bowl of soup. But will you play your violin for us, please? And he says, well, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> they give him the soup, they give him the shelter, and he just, da -da 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 that's what has to happen. The modulation between these, these groups. So, Musk knows what's up, but how do you get there from here? Well, it's the um, sausage that nobody wants to see. So, so, so anyway, we don't have to repeat it. We did it. You and me, we, we got there because that's exactly what's happening. We get a chance to go, how do you actually speak to all these large talk? Because we're there's a lot of talk and consensus in those rooms. We go, I don't think that you did anything this week or something. <laughs> he just, I, I told those guys, you know, I'm interested in the pro the weird processes of actually coming together as a, as a breakout group. Yeah, you know, one of the weird things that happened with me is uh, I was in a group with uh, Val, who is one of the Fractally team. And so he's talking about the contribution he's made, you know, in like what they're working on or whatever. And, I'm, and, and we're comparing him to Joshua Seymour, who is, you know, in a role with running the meetings and whatever. And it's sort of like, well, how do I evaluate someone's contributions that they've made when I can't uh, see the results or the outcome of those contributions? Whereas I can see Joshua's immediately. Do I reward him based on what effort he's made that hasn't actually amounted to anything? Because I mean, for all I know, fractally could just dissolve as a business you know, like, and so I was of the mindset, you know, like, I, it's sort of confusing to me because I don't know exactly, I'm sure he's doing something, but is he paid for his, his work? You know, is that, does that matter? And one of the interesting things that came up was when I was in a breakout room with uh, Joshua Seymour before, I asked him, you know, I don't understand your relationship to Fractally. Like, are you a staff member? You know, are you paid to do, to run the meetings? Because if you are, wouldn't that be different than, you know, if, you know, you're just doing this all on your own accord. Well, he told me that back then he wasn't staffed. And then last week, he told me that he entered into an independent contracting relationship with Fractally to provide whatever. And so I'm like, well, that's great. But shouldn't that all be openly disclosed? I'm like, because he didn't go into details over, like, what the compensation was or what exactly. Hey, uh, Gregory Wexler, uh, Josh is a contemporary. Basically, they are uh, the same. They're, 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 the, they're, the, they're FET, they're administrators for this whole thing. Uh, Wexler, uh, fascinating, uh, there in front of, uh, every, in our breakout room, uh, we had this similar conversation where Wexler uh, springs, but I'm not getting paid. I've refused a salary. I say, ah, ah, because then the conversation starts saying, well, is it his responsibility to tell the whole story or is he playing around with withholding an idea that I say, look, funding, brute force funding is a force. Dan Larimer employs 12 people. Well, what is brute force funding? The buddy of yours that's a good, best friend in the world, doesn't ever hang out with you, but he comes to the table and solves your problem with hard cash every once in a while. What? How good of a friend is he compared to the, the, the motherfucker that ain't got shit that has been your boy in your heart forever? I don't know the answer to the question. So yeah. the, the old ma ma mar magicians would give a red envelope uh, where the poor guy can come with five dollars, the rich guy can come five thousand dollars. They could both walk away happy, and the teacher as well. <laughs> and and the and the training goes on, irrespective of money and well and all this bullshit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said that to Dan in the room and to Greg Wax. I said, "Look, man. So I don't know about value per dollar unit. Forget it. 
just the red envelope item. This is, we don't know the answer to this, your good question to Josh at all right now. It's being asked. How do we val evaluate cold, hard? I just employed 12 people. I'm an employee and work 40 hours because I told him I work 20 hours. Well, it, it, you know, in my opinion of a lot of businesses, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying all businesses are this way, but a lot of times businesses can usurp uh, budgets and not generate a whole lot of value. <laughs> I'm not saying that's true factually, but that happens a lot in government and nonprofits. I, I know what you're Other saying. laundering schemes. <laughs> <laughs> he practically may die, you know, he's not funded right now. He asked for 3.4 million from EOS and they were like, no, but EOS is, uh, is uh, his community, which is obviously the, the value is the, the people doing the work, right? Uh, which is the community because we're learning this whole symbiotic thing. And so where's Dan going to get $3.4 million? Probably his own pocket and build on EOS is my thought. And maybe halfway with ENF. Can you give me one seven, please? Thanks. Okay, boom. And it's public goodness. I'm, I would vote for that. Just give him the money is a great thing, but it could fail. We all want to double next week. I invited somebody so we can all get to 100 people instead of 50. It's not like there's a thousand people showing up every week yet, you know, but we're in an incubation state. Will it survive? I go, I don't know, man. I've seen a bunch of cool projects go away. Yeah, I still feel as though it takes a certain kind of breed of person to participate with Fractally right now for its growth. Because like the whole, just uh, who was it? Um, somebody else in Go Fractly right before we got on here was saying that they they couldn't they had a problem with Hive and you know they're like into crypto and ADD and really good at this stuff and so they he made some because I was I was in my early stages with it I was I was so pissed off because the stupid Mighty Networks interface yeah. has a, a has a setting to turn off the send button on messages so I'm sitting here going how do I reply to this. You know, for the longest time, it was like, why was my default setting to turn off the send button? And I was like, that is so stupid to even have that as an option. You know, what, where, what, where, where, what, which, uh, inter what, what, uh, forum was that on the site itself? Like, just... Let me see if I can find it. Maybe you're not. Well, no, it was. It was on. It was on a post. You it think? Go fractally. Just, just right before we got into Zoom call, I, I got a notification for it, and it was actually a, a message. I think. It was like one of these messages where they message everyone. And it was and uh, my last response was from like a long time ago. But then somebody else, okay, let me screenshot it or send it. Screen share. That's the new way. Yeah, buddy. yeah, that's right. Uh, where is the, huh. maybe it was a notification. Let me move this over, move this around. Yeah, yeah, either way, you can let it go. I, I don't really care about that. I don't think you do either. But if you dig yeah. it up, yeah. hit me up if, if you dig that up for sure. Uh, I'm looking at this uh, Zoom thing to share your screen. How do you even uh, do that? I'm trying to think participants. I Host that. disabled participant screen sharing. So you have to enable screen sharing for me. So go to participants. I did. And then. Uh, and I got more. And I, your drop down does not have anything about sharing screen so i'll just make you host you can share screen but you don't even want to share screen do you i mean we're dropping this uh, if i find the screen i, I want to make sure we get back to your original question so let's ask that yeah, what, yeah, yeah, what yeah. is it what is it we want to know about better because i hadn't really said it to many people anybody right, really, right, but right. Back to i do know that i got that bread uh bread proofing right now 45 minutes i'll get an alarm in my right ear and jump up and put it in so it's like break my head would you you know it's like timers city man i've probably set five timers in the last two to three hours <laughs> so um yeah uh the uh, i think you're beginning to understand the scope it's large we, we want to be fluent with gracie Liu, one of our chief delegates we want the chinese people rivers rivers of um, of of uh, of impressions because see you know the different language speaking groups speak in different uh, fundamental uh, structural like projected uh, 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 like like um, blocks. So so the colors, the the the, the shapes uh, literally can play a role into how they're you catch wind of the Twitter spaces uh, talk of KOL by Zach Gall and the and the web link he shared over their flash news. Okay, well basically he 
I think in the uh, Fireside chat, he reviewed the uh, Twitter Spaces EVM thing. And what he was, it was, he was explaining is the Chinese community have all these KOLs, which are like independent news. I forget what it stands for, something of leadership. Yeah, I heard it in the AMA last last night that was on YouTube. Uh, Zach Gall said exactly this. He said it was every I, I forwarded every one of those links, by the way. Ha ha. Oh, you did to him. I did. I did. I they they the the the, the, the ENF went top to bottom. I went down each one of them and tweeted. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Because EOS is doing some interesting stuff. I'm just straight up going like this. We're expressing ourselves, and the media come out and go. Duh, 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 duh. The last second two sections had all these international. Didn't care. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. And then all the stuff in my notifications just lit up. I, I didn't even read them, man. I was like, just let it go. Yeah, yeah. you know that was another thing. Is I don't know about. I mean, it, it, the, what are we doing here? Is this scope limited to language translation because there's a lot of stuff where I'm thinking, man, I wish I could automate these processes. <laughs> well, like, care, careful, we can't, we can't automate. Well, I know, I know, but I'm just, I'm not, uh, I, I know, I, I'm sure we can. It's just like, I don't know if that's something that we should be thinking about or talking about right now. Yes, we should be, please. It needs to just be on our list because all we're going to do is go to the right church, right pew, uh, turn the key, and they're going to the value will flow and, and we will populate the, uh, the larger, uh, I say giant robot in the, uh, in the chat, the, the, the EOS translation foundation, giant robot will wake and go, ah, da, be, da, 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 be, da, da. And, and the whole thing will be good because of this value unlock that the, that the fractally is, is, is speaking to, because that's basically we're testing fractally and, and it's, it's, it's evidence of, we can get someone to go ahead and do the automation solutions because it's all theoretically copy paste almost, you know, the right. you know, the integration and fabricing, but these open source are now finally going to start getting a piece of the pie through practice. Do, do you ever think about the, I, cause I clearly see that the value the, um, the team provides to the bees is immense, but did you ever think how that will change uh, the bees structure and might put certain people out of jobs or change their jobs. I, I have, and I have a lots of good ideas because cool. a, bee, a bee swarms. So the A to D system is a evidentiary of a bee swarm that would normally scare a human race, but it's actually gonna be frightening only originally. But the truth is, is that flow that we're unlocking across different language speaking groups We'll look, we'll look a lot like in the matrix when that, that machine just created a chair for, uh, for Keanu Reeves to sit in. It was the third matrix. I loved all three of them, but basically he's sitting on a big old hand like this and he sits in the, the chair of a bunch of micro machines that all formed to help him. Well, that's not, you know, bugs, bugs and infestation is not going to be the characteristic of, of swarm flow and open source, um, like, uh, workflows with giving and receiving as we transcend even token tokenomics tokenomics just an intermediary stage because we won't even need the storage of goods and services across time anymore as money because but it is a little ways out but ultimately we're, we're a to ding everything and i think the species is stepping up but what it's going to take is like uh is inheriting it so when we say we want to do automation all we do is turn the plugs and so-and-so's and then the, the whole uh, fluid flow fills up our, uh, our automation sections that, that applies to what you're, you're embodying. Can we stamp this here, 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 please? Thanks. And it's yesterday and I've already like, can you just put it on paper? We'll, we'll just turn okay, this. So, so what I'm, cause this is so much music to my ears. Yes. Cause I've been using computers since my Vic 20 and, you know, dial up modems to, you know, all the way up till today. And I've never been in like a coder per se, but I know a lot about technology because, you know, I've, I've, I'm pretty good with hardware. Um, I've self-taught in Windows and Linux and Mac. I haven't used Mac much lately because I don't own one. But um, I keep thinking to myself, 
like my AI program or my thing, like my machine learning is this how, and so in my mind, I'm designing it, but I'm like, how do I even implement it? You know, I don't know any Python or I don't know any of this stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think it doesn't matter. that's not my job. <laughs> that's what I decided. That's not my job. <laughs> yeah. And here we are, the, uh, the, uh, the tapestry or that little mi micro machine that is the, uh, the, uh, the bot that is self-coding. Like we're, you and I are just literally little, little giant robots that are just little right. bots that are connecting the dots. And so it's like, how do you get meta? And yesterday, because that's the pace when there is no such thing as time, life is only a dream and in it, we're an imagination of ourselves or whatever that fucking hilarious ass shit that goes. Uh, but basically, yeah, when it all breaks down and there's no real. So here's what I would say, speak to when it comes to that uh, last like inflection, that is the conversation you and I have, uh, the, uh, the body of kind of like uh, information in this dialogue uh, on each side of the dialogue is equivalent. That, now that, that is a, already upsetting. Uh, so what, what I'll say is that that's what I, what I would suggest and I would go lend evidence as to you have impressed and likewise the, the flashing uh, speed at which I've been able to move into say the EOS translation, whatever, all of that stuff is almost boring at some point when we just say this, it's the EOS Translation Foundation. Oh, by the way, here's a link to our mission. Okay, we're done. And then, and then we don't have to even have that conversation. If they dig into this, if they dig into this chat uh, and find this archive <laughs> and go, oh, that's funny. These guys were thinking about it back then on how not to shoot one's own foot. Right. Sure, whatever. But the automation will flow uh, as we're like, taking cues from solving coordination well you know and so like the thing i was thinking is like take the twitter spaces example because the way i've been looking at uh the translation thing is like what i this concept of like content type like if, what is the content that we're dealing with like for example the eosps is youtube videos and that that's one iteration so now when i see these twitter spaces one of the things i realized about the twitter spaces is that when they speak in Chinese, the Twitter spaces has the capability of auto captioning in Chinese or English or whatever. And so I'm like, well, what is Twitter going to do about these captioned texts? Are they going to provide a downloadable file for this thing to be translated or are we? You know, are we going to be talking to Twitter about integrating our API with their thing or are we going to build, you know, like this, it's just like how we deal with the YouTube translation. I if, already if, know. I already know. Okay, good. Uh, they've been behind walled gardens, but no more. We're taking ownership as a community and a community that's building on pretty high ideals. One that would say we're going to leverage our, our basic uh, rights or, or, or what we want uh, based on how well we can coordinate. And uh, if that so happens such efficiently to decentralize translation and the walled garden model, Sure, we think that's fine. Doesn't matter. I can tell you right now, the solution's not right now. Microsoft hasn't come to my door and said, look at all this great fucking translations. It's all yours. No, there's big blocks to a bunch of bullshit. And oh, yeah. I, think, I think that can change overnight. And But what I think comes back to what we want to talk today is I, I want a roadmap with a lowercase r uh, that just puts this on paper so we can say, hey, can we check those four boxes? Okay, this week we went ahead and checked four boxes. Okay, can we check those things? Okay, can we have a meet and greet? Okay, can we get the Spanish or the Chinese piece? Hey, can we copy paste, please? Get the guys, so, okay, Dan, talk, talk to Doug, talk to Doug, talk to Doug or whatever, because right. whenever you're talking, you want, I want, and we want to bring it in house and put it on that roadmap so we literally can just lowercase b build it out without any inertia i don't i'm not a coder but i am a uh, human automaton a legacy of uh a reverberating uh input output speak of call it old ai but we're rising where the human complexity of the whole package is coming to the table because the body i don't believe is going to be left behind mm -hmm. i do not think now, uh, you don't throw a trillion years of evolution away. 
because humans came up with a fucking secondary, thirdly, fourth layer AI. You know what I mean? Nah, -uh. no, it's right. it's right. gonna get excellent, and when the minerals are running the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. So uh, let's talk about uh, the upcoming week. So um, the meeting, what's Tuesday? Yes, guess, yes, it's on my calendar. I've never used a calendar before. Yeah, I believe it's 17 UTC, right? I'll verify what one. That's 2 p.m. What time What time zone are you in? I am central. Okay, I'm central too. Perfect. So that's 2 p.m. our time. Yeah, I'm doing just almost straight UTC. And right now it's the minus five for us, but right. it'll change to a minus six overnight. Right. Uh, this one is, uh, our time is 12 p.m. Oh, 12. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, how did I get? Oh, I, yeah, I did math wrong. Okay. It's 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., but that's dangerous. I want to see a UTC value, and I don't. So it has to be 1,700. I want to see that in the chats now before we leave this conversation so we don't. All right, I got it. Tuesday, 1,700 UTC. I made a separate Gmail account for all my EOS videos in case I wanted to like relinquish the account for some reason and share it in a way that would mix things up. Hey, look, uh, I have an LLC, mm -hmm. or it's in the it's in the making uh, for just generalized LLC. So you have an email you said you set up that you can use de dedicated translation foundation email. Well, I have this email for. Uh, gmail it's eos open stage i made it just so i could have a separated youtube thing for my own personal stuff okay and so uh i just realized when i was logging into my google calendar i was in the wrong corner yeah because if this thing works the the funding flow will uh will uh, necessitate a copy paste of what the enf did over the last year which is basically get their whole entity stuff square right you know what they did in their first few meetings Hey, reaches over to Telos and Telos admin says, I got the whole accounting side already set up. Okay, go ahead. You can handle it. <laughs> I was like, this whole value sharing with EOS IO coming together is going to be massive, man. And, and, and you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it looks that way from, from, from my theoretical perspective. I mean, the groups that are in the shared, like, um, the shared, like, uh, skin in the game with that EOS with that EOS IO plus group that that United Telos and uh, UX and Wax and EOS S those groups besides EOS uh, they, they're paying like a quarter an eighth a tenth a, a twentieth of what EOS is funding for the EOS IO code base so they're getting a really good deal year one mm -hmm. I looked at that the, the amounts they put in it right. was it was a good deal for them but year one you can expect that. So well, they wanted they wanted the, uh, a support and, uh, alliance of what entities to incentivize it. <laughs> You're right, man. I was so I thought that was so cool, and and then um, I thought it was interesting that that everybody was getting a really good deal year one while they all look at it and go, "Is this well, what's going on here?" Yeah, okay, okay, because everybody kind of knows theoretically it's the good thing to do, but actually those guys are running on some serious value models. EOS already has the $2 billion just to fuck with, but those guys are like, I don't want to lose my money. They paid up. They put the money in like this last week. Kaboom. So what does that mean for us? That means Eves can, can, has already paved the way for just handling the, the, um, the, the liability side of standing these organizations up. Mm -hmm. We don't have to like, reinvent anything on what we would never want to fuck with that is how do you run a corporation <laughs> i'm like basically yeast is dealing with what block one didn't really do a good job of doing which is getting all their eyes dotted and t's crossed and 
compliance. Exactly. And mitigating risk sufficiently will, while maintaining a sufficient set of compliance structures. Right. Because they, they were zero risk. They'll hold on to their Bitcoin. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay. But again, the hardening factor, if we, if we survive, we are going to be a force. That's why just fundamentally, when you see this rose up here, um, with the EVM is interesting that ETH dev last night because it's all written into uh, users and uh, developers are good metrics. So, so uh, Telos right now says we are a success this year if we increase our developer load by 100. So, so I'm over here like, you know, how how do we even do these things? Uh, well, who's doing what, and can we get it? Can we learn from that? And Telos is doing it. They say 100 Telos, 100 devs would be a a, a, a metric that would say we are going to be successful in our next chapter after the EVM launch. Because, you know, tell us when 100x, you know what I mean? Hey, uh, I think you got a, a bad link in your document. The uh, tasks, task list number one, there's a link to the peak D. It's going to Douglas Butner's Web4 article. All right, let's do that. I got the Windows game Mac style where you rearrange windows for fun. Yeah. All right, I'm on the spreadsheet now. Oh, peaked? Yeah. So, so what I said is this, we want to use this as a template and publish it to the community. So oh, this guy, yeah. Douglas, Douglas Butner, put together a, hello, this is who we are as a team, fractally team. Oh, we want to, use that as an example. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I reached out to him and I said, can we use your shit as a template? Because it's pretty slick. So we want to copy paste and feed all that information in that. But I don't want it to be a lot. I just kind of want it to be like, here's who we are. We're done. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, who's working on that? No one. But we got it on paper, which is the key. Right, right, right. It just, it's the task is out one at least. Yeah, in fact, uh, as you want to add those ideas you had, I, I want to, I'll type it in this list. But because uh, 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 I guess really what it comes down to is if because um, it's not on the list, but it's the it's uh, exploring dialogue uh, with uh, Vincent of the OS Nation with the onboarding of junior developers to expand it to include um, a language translation team component. Like if you need people at a university that speak a certain language and they wanted to get on board with assisting however with the sort of language translation like a cookie cutter way is what i'm looking for and then similarly eden and fractally as governance models for experimentation with students students that want to use the eden election system and or the fractally want to participate directly in fractally governance to have like a uh, coordinating effort through this you know, one thing to where it's like, these are optional add-ons, you know, if there's enough interest. Does that make sense? I already talked to Brandon Fancher about this project. So he's aware. So when Dan and I've been talking over and over, when they're ready for the same type stuff, I won't be surprised if they talk to me like Dan talked to me a year and a half ago, he reached out to me and he said, I hear you want to open up a translation portal on EOS. Look forward to an invite to Eden. And I was like, because we hadn't built Eden yet, you know? And, and so there's a lot to that because like even say the, the onboarding of, of, of young developers, there's a lot of documentation and stuff that probably gives you benefit from translation. Your idea is stellar, bro. Hey, look, four and five, do you see it now in the near term? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you see that, uh, Vincent of ES Nation and then same yeah, for yeah, Eden? Yeah, I see it, I see it, yeah, yeah, I see it. So let's let's continue to move on, move out on your other good ideas because you, you said, but that was it pretty much. But there, are, I think there are another one. Automation was another one. What's that? Midterm, long term, near term? Well, what's going I, on? I, I just it's this, this back end or not back end. It's just this third party service that I'm using their API translation um, tools for YouTube videos, but it has a lot of other features. But I have my friend who I was saying, hey, you could probably help us get involved to make a a thing to where if you want it, like an interface, you know, I don't know, I don't know what your guys' plans are with, say, for the YouTube translation. I think the, Tuesday Translate Me is going to say, here's the solution we recommend, and we've already built it, but I don't know. 
Yeah, I'd just be curious because one of the things that Jesse asked me with the system I was using, it says, can we review or edit the translation changes before publishing to YouTube? The system I had did not allow for that. You translate me solved it. Okay, good, 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 good. I figured it wouldn't be hard, you know, but it's just, I'm hard coded in with whatever I have. You're going to fucking love it. I can't wait. That's awesome. So, so he shows that to me like a week ago and I go, stop. It's great. And he goes, but there's more. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of that, two days later, Jesse says the same thing demo. And he says, glad you asked. And he's not smug. He's a very sweet person. I'm, I'm characterizing and having fun. <laughs> so basically when we met with Jesse, Jesse asked, Ryan shows him and Jesse asks a question, a, a good, a, a, a decent entry level. Second one was a good question. Third one, he says, I love it. Well, you know, what's awesome is my expectation is not only the uh, level of curiosity and interest that will come about over the increased publicity we can create with language translation, there will be the very real fact that now these things will be discoverable in foreign languages, which I can only assume will cause more of a growth of uh, the EOS ecosystems, you know, like uh, the understanding of it in a larger audience. And given the uh, EOS EBM and the timeline for it and everything that's going on, I'm, I'm looking towards, you know, quarter three, quarter four, some, some definite exciting things happening. Yeah, I think maybe sooner, because I told you already, oh, yeah. Palme Palmetto 3 is, uh, Translate Me is, is, is already up and running. So in other words, we got the tech, um, we, got, we got like the, the infrastructure, like the hard infrastructure piece uh, underway. That's the hardest part is to go through the, the long tail of like something that- It's, it's almost should... like I came in and the meal was already prepared. <laughs> it's like, it's already been, everything's really, I'm just helping out with like the, uh, the little toppings and the little last bit of fixings. <laughs> yes, I'm yes. Like inviting you... people to the table. Hey, come everybody, come eat. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's, that's, um, so, so for, for us, we could ask, well, where, what are, what kind of like early work like that early work are we doing right now for later it's the same and then also what kind of products are we using now that we're working into the future it's the same and that's what your question originally was is where do we stand right right <laughs> so so i want to i want to uh say um uh, the piece on publicity i think we've covered with the number two uh, we want to populate the Hive content across all social media channels, especially MindWeb. I want to work with Patrick to make sure that, see, we've already got our own like super Oracle local portal. Uh, Patrick's building this MindWeb and he can build all kinds of UIs over it. So Hive is not that, but uh, we want something to be plugged in as on a blockchain. He's got that in his head and on, online, but that's hard to do. Right now, he's just getting the good integrity and the content. That's really the, 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 uh, the product. Plugging it into the blockchain is really secondary. So right now, we have a dead... We got a de have you any understanding of how uh, MindWeb is designed? Like Because uh, just out of curiosity... Yes, I do. It's basically this. It's designed very visually as blocks to contain archives. So how do you, it's, it's, it's basically a huge reservoir. It's, 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 it's made, it's, and it's not very easy and fun to fuck with. It's more like, get me out of here. But if it had a, if it had a UI on it or some kinds, it's, it's a treasure trove. We got the no, guy I that- agree. I agree. I love, I love mind mapping. I, I've been into something called free playing just because I always like to try to uh, find the best open source, you know, adaptable tools. And one of the things I like about FreePlane is it has Python script integration in it. You can actually uh, make it make like your cells into interact with, uh, it's designed for that. But um, I really like Patrick's stuff, but it's not, a, a, some of the stuff he's doing isn't like, I haven't really looked at it closely, but I have sometimes hard time Googling and searching and locating some of the things he published. Yeah, it's, it's just archive. That's it. Um, 
it's not present presented with the right metadata structure or whatever. Not else. usable. Right. So it's 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 helpful for us if we can find it. But then it's sort of like if you spend that initial time trying to find it, you can't find it. Then spend you any time. It. Yeah. Don't spend any time. Uh, just but do do integrate with Patrick like we are for one a demonstration of our own interest but two is for the archiving itself so we want to like tap into all that and then you know someone like your buddy or developers on some other levels can sit here and say hey i'm the ui guy you know i can make this this come together and you say okay great and um we will have uh, have a translation portal set up on the back end i was sort of cool uh he was explaining to me um he's building the translation portal you, do you know that Patrick Patrick talked to Rab Neat uh, yesterday morning and they so come up with Rab Neat. Rab Neat is the CTO tech guy. Oh, yeah, that's right. You mean, yeah, that's right. Listen to this one. You're going to love this. I think we've got a both a translate translation solution and a training the algorithm solution all through the mind web. Ooh, I love it. Now, if we put a layer over it to people who can read and understand it to go, this is what I want, this is what I want to do. Well, problem solved. So look, that was the original thing that I published, like EOS translation portal. I put that on eoscommunity.org. Remember that old forum that everybody was kind of using right. in the early stages of Eden? Well, basically, uh, that's got my post where I'll point to that at any time and say, um, I am, I am, I wear the cape. I make the whoosh noises. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's fucking awesome, man. Because we got street credibility is my point. <laughs> uh, legacy, practically. You know, because you, you, can, you can run, you can sell that all day long that we've been doing this for a year and a half, in other words. Oh, okay, what you got? Free plane, okay. Is this a UI kind of uh, uh, concept? Well, no, it's just it's it's just a mind mapping tool that I I I I'm sort of fond of or just curious about because it has these add-on inscripting JavaScript. So I'm I'm looking at home. So it starts here. This is the start page. Uh, yeah. Well, the, if you scroll down to the add-on inscripts thing, that's just the thought thing I thought was interesting to me. Yeah, I see. Okay, great. This is the Python point. Right. So I don't know if this provides any value, but out of it seems to be relatively well maintained. I mean, it got staff choice award in December 2020. So yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So ultimately we want to decentralize all of this stuff. And uh, these are uh, these are good prove prove outs. The APIs, everything decentralized, decentralized. See, so uh, we don't know how. But even Patrick's is not decentralized. It's his own server, you know? Well, you see, and that's the thing is that, like, uh, that we're obviously not, if, as this community grows, we can't expect Patrick to handle every single post that we want to enter. Oh, no, no, not at all. But he is he is doing these great things. And, and if he can build our kernel for translate, uh, our own UI for the, for the, for the translation kernel, right. oh, man, this is great. Now, now we, he can give his baby to the community at any point. He can build a chain and have token system and all these things and and then govern it from the community and all this stuff but we have that kernel translation portal where video and and the so-and-so the, the new publications jesse b's the demo that Je that ryan showed jesse had jesse go De uh, ryan basically showed jesse that the administrator that the, that the jesse person uh submits a a, a document um now his list of documents just grew by one and he sees it right there. Okay, cool. Then he chooses 10 up to 10, but that's configurable because they own the code. Uh, they can do whatever they want. And uh, EOS community has full dev support for all of that. And so basically he adds all these languages, three or four languages. Then he says, send it, sends it out to 11,000 potential translators, but only in, in its own languages correctly. So he can whitelist. I only want, you know, this person, this person, this person on that list of Spanish and uh, translators, whatever. Well, then they get it. And he, he logs out. He goes into the user portal. The user goes, oh, here's a flagged one. This is a new document. Do I want it or not? He opens it up. He goes, I'll take it. And there's a dollar amount and all that shit. And he goes, boom, let's do this. And next thing you know, uh, Jesse gets, oh, oh, excuse me. The user 
does the retranslation. There's two tabs, one the original, one's the new. He, he got a 75%, it's already been through the 75% translation algorithm at that point. Okay. He makes the corrections. Now there's two tabs and he says, well, I'm done. Sends it back. Now Jesse has a flag. When, he, when Jesse logs on, he goes, oh, okay, looks at it, send it. Is this just for documents or is this for, this for finalizing translation for at this point, let's say just documents. Okay. So it doesn't deal with the timestamps with the SRT. With the what? Timestamps in the SRT files. Because in the closed captioning of the YouTube videos, there's a beginning. Ryan has said he has what he believes all of that already covered. It doesn't seem like it should be that. I mean, because SRT is it's such a very simple basic structure. Now you can, I, I, we, you and me are trying to build a rhythm to uh, uh, plug you into the language that I've slowly been able to learn about where we're at and what's real or not. Right. And I think we're on a, more of the same page as we start saying, well, what can they do or what has been done or what should we be doing? It's all different. So we're, we're, we're really uh, genning up a, a lexicon, you and me, uh, for workflow purposes to, in a word, say this or that or boom. So now you can see uh, Tuesday's meeting is going to be good. Mm, yeah, it'll be yeah. awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really, because the thing that's interesting to me is like, I'm wondering what would have happened if I didn't get involved. <laughs> yeah, well, probably much of the same. Yeah, I know. It's like, I yeah. think I, I'm not, I might have just got lucky for myself. <laughs> probably have a couple extra licks on the guitar that you know pretty well right 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 <laughs> you sit there and go what did i do today i have no idea well you know because for me it was like i don't care if i'm if i leave the group and i've done a 20 week uh sit out because it's more fun for me to get involved now at this early opportunity and kick this kick this thing into gear and, and even if i skedaddle away at least i got in you know had some fun <laughs> it's, it's something love I love it. And if you disappeared uh, tomorrow, uh, we, we, we would understand, you know, <laughs> but hey, what's really interesting about that is the no, no mass or no inertia. There, there is no binding. It's a decentralized piece. Right. And reputation does emerge, but I wouldn't worry about bad reputations and shit like that. If things come and go, you know, mm -hmm. and, and people rug pull all the time. And I think it's very valid. In its, in its context. I know that's blasphemy, but I want to know what the rug puller's bank account's going to look like after he plugs into things like teams and fractalies and so-and-so's as like, how do the trolls get paid? Or there's not going to be any more trolls to harden our network. So I, I don't want to just completely, but Dan's question was answered. I, answer, I asked that question. Dan's answer was this. If you've ever had kids, you know that if it's total chaos, you're going to have to put a hammer down. And I was like, fair enough for now, fair enough. But, but with the parents that are at their end of their rope, you know, they can't learn unless it's from those kids driving them crazy. But that's just a whole other cycle of life, basically, is what that is. It's just going to keep turning and you know, go, go on to the next kind of phase. Well, I, have another, I want to see what tokenomic is. I have another yeah. thing to possibly add to the list. I'm going to send you a link to it in the chat and you can decide. This is a live streaming company that does satellite. Like they have the capability to do large scale events via satellite, like where there's no internet hookup. And Samara, who is part of trying to be part of Fractally, um, is partnered with this guy in Ojai and they're redoing their whole interface because the business has been defunct for like the last five years. And they're trying to get it up online and they're doing all these events promotions. But she wants to participate with Fractally and, and introduce Fractal Governance um, to the native population and kids and whatnot. And it's part of this whole consciousness shift deal. And so uh, I already spoke to one of their developers about do they have a solution for language translation or in the captioning or whatever in their so, um, so what in, in a in a bullet what is it what is this task basically is explore what uh, well, i'm just wondering uh that's a very good question i'm wondering what their business model is and whether or not because they're they're also talking about developing on but when i started talking to the guy he was interested in eos and just developing What's the group called what do they do what is their name or yes, what's what the like it's the links right there in the chat you see it Oh, looking now. Okay. But basically they do live stream, they do uh, events. They broadcast and live stream events. 
and they do they don't require internet hookup because they do it through satellite. And their site sucks. I don't know why it takes so long to load, but I have a feeling it has to do with outdated web standards and just who knows what. But anyways, they're in the process of redoing their site. And the, the thing that was interesting to me, because like, I don't, really don't care if they have a uh, need or not for language translation. I just wanted to talk to the guy and see what his response was. But when I started talking to him, he was he was telling me his other ideas and an interest in developing on on a, on blockchain and he didn't really know much about it and i was like well this guy's got interest in developing a business on eos i want to talk to him more anyways <laughs> yeah basically uh so onboarding right and so uh this is i don't i don't know if it needs to be written down on a list or i'm just mentioning yeah it. it is uh explore is the driver though right so explore integrating translation hold on uh into uh, the satellite project DS Live, and I got your link, and it says they're in the process of redoing their site. We can get them on EOS, onboard their project onto EOS. Hey, let me, let me, I'm going to just send you a snippet from their uh, about page in the chat. Because they, they actually they want to do a uh, fundraising event for Ukraine, I think, in the fall or something like that. Yeah, I'm loving what you're saying about that because it, it's some on the ground shit. It ends up cut off in the middle of the word for applications for. Oh, that's just on their about page. If you go to the link, uh, I can get back there. I don't know why it cut off. Is, is, is it on the page like that? Or? I can get directly to the about thing on that. Yeah, but their, their site, it takes forever to load and you know, they have a lot of basic. It's full of audio. Saturday. All right. Wait one. Okay, I see the about. Okay. Yeah, but they've, they've done events in like London and all over the place. And I think the last airing of anything was in three years ago. But I guess what happened was one of the primary partners of the business died. And once he died, the business just sort of fell apart. And now the, the other partners that's still around is now trying to build back together a team to bring back this business. And so Samara wants to use this infrastructure to do events promotion and take a traveling road show. <laughs> um, that's another story. Well, it sounds awesome. But uh, she incidentally is in the San Diego area, the same area where Andrew Weir, I don't know if you know Andrew with Polaris Music. Oh, I love him, he's, he's neat. Yeah, I want to get Andrew and uh, Samara talking because her uh, partner is really in the music promotion and they could probably develop some synergy there. Um, let's see. So basically, uh, we're close to being able to do kind of everything in three streams because if we can get our tech pretty solidified up to projects 10 in total for Translate Me solutions, then um, we can take on pretty much anything like in stride. So um, I think I think our list is okay. I want it to I want to get a bunch of stuff on there, but then I want it to take form, and I, I want to see if we can um, kind of have fun knocking a handful of these off with other entities that are not part of our team, like finishing all of those filling items because that's what they do we're like hey can you send this to us thanks okay can you so and so thanks okay boom and we just kind of finish off the thing because we'll just feed it into into the mind web we'll uh and then and then the jesse b's piece will be fading into one of the things that we're we're mother henning along the along the way if there's any miscommunication shit like that we'll jump in and uh we'll right the wrongs or fix it all because we we know we kind of are our skill set is going to be knowing the big picture when it comes to potential of the all these value groups across languages. Nobody really has any idea how much energy we're talking about, but it's a lot. And as far as those ideas that I was suggesting with uh, Vincent and the US station, I don't mind penciling out more 
in detail what I'm sort of thinking or how it could work out. Because I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, honestly, like it's almost pointless if I, if in discussion with him, there, there's no interest. Um, but you know, there might, he might have some premeditated ideas to suggest also. But I think I'd be better off actually just starting with something. So when I, if I, if I were to try to create some dialogue, I have like a something to show, like start with the tear down. Yeah. And, Value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. Well, uh, whatever you're doing, I'd say that's your, that seems to be a very uh, brilliant, uh, like, uh, MO. And I don't know how much permission I need to get from the team. Like, if I start brainstorming ideas and wanting to c contact, communicate with other people, I sort of figure, well, this is a decentralized, you know, organization and i'm going to act autonomously and you know with the not try to violate trust with the group or do anything you know yeah the way i find effective there is uh primarily speaking uh sending out some kind of flag so that you're not the only one that understands or has some con kind of concept about what 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 is what it is that you know uh if you share kind of what it is you know uh It'll, it'll flow pretty well. I love what Oscar keeps saying. Everything I say, he, he has something that's, that's like, that's clear uh, just to say. And I'm like, oh, you know, cause I have no idea who Oscar is. We, we, I, you know, I had a fun time chatting with him, but you know, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I had a great time. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's a uh, really cool feature of, uh, what, what, of us scoping is bringing that into, like housing that, uh, uh, once it has kind of kind of burst out and been been a real force, because when when you toss all that stuff out, um, that is a extremely valuable. So this decentralization, but Dan's further coordination using decentralized technologies in the spirit of a of a of a larger freedom of uh, liberty, um, is uh, is the 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 goal or, or whatever we're doing is one of our one of our purposes at least but um i, I wanted to see the uh, you know the other thing is is that that dsi thing say if they're just a for-profit business there's no reason why we can't offer them a service at a fee right or how would that work translate me that's what translate me is yeah. right and so if we could do, we could offer them a better fee uh, we basically can think much, much more better than a uh, localized corporation as a decentralized, uh, uh, you know, as, as whoever the EOS community is, because <laughs> yeah. we got all of the skills, bro. Right, because that's what I'm thinking is like, we should look at every, every entity, uh, business entity that in any way takes advantage of, say, Translate Me services as to me, an open candidate for what other kind of EOS solutions can we help them out with, you know? Uh, it's a, it's a, sir, it's a basically a, a celebration of, of cop, of the old school copy paste. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why when, 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 when Jesse and I first started interacting and I was like screwing around with that thing, I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a glorified button clicker, you know, like, I got a greater value than this. Don't you guys have a translation solution out there? <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> hey, uh, so uh, yeah, I can I can definitely relate. Uh, I I uh, I'm not. I basically have no intention whatsoever of not being uh, in it for the tech. I always have. I I'm not suddenly going to become a bureaucrat. Well, Mark, I had a great time chatting with you. I think I want to wind this up. I want to, uh, um, I want to get some. Uh, I want to get this video uploaded and rendered because the thing I like about getting it uploaded to YouTube as soon as possible is then my auto caption text appears <laughs> sooner. Your auto caption thing. It, it, let's put that almost on as a whole nother demo project underway along with the chatbot, the mind web and it's, my, it's just like me just screwing around with my own third party solution it's going to be a it's going to be a poster child for what we're doing for our group and for the translation effort overall it's going to be beautiful you're you're you when you did all that i was like oh, i i did nothing 
I just sat there. I was like, next thing you know, we got a meeting on Tuesday, finishing it all out. I was like, <laughs> dude, there's a huge future. I, when I thought of the portal originally, I was like, I want video stream. I want everything fucking translated. I want to sit there and listen to all the Chinese communities play all of their good informational interests and lay everything out. I want to work with flow with the Korean communities, the Spanish your people that are doing the satellite stuff is perfect because it really digs into new communities and language barrier communities that would never otherwise connect and suddenly be a thousand times more value added. It's like uh, original trade groups uh, across nations. Everybody just like an abundance of value. And, and the thing I like about that also is if they have an existing user base that is happy with the product and we get in board with them, then it gives us more, way more exposure. And oh, it's, quite, it's quite possible, likely, that in the long term, if things work out with PSI, that we'll have like an EOS partner, like an advocate. It could, it could quite very well be the case. Like, uh, I, I totally see. They're gold. De developers and users are gold. Mm -hmm. So, so we're trying to build cool things and everything, but you need the devs and the users. You got to build the whole model thing. Well, you need funding. Okay, got it. But devs, users, yay. Okay, we got the whole thing. So your community, across, and we're going to take language out of the picture as far as being one of those things. Oh, and you know what else I want to do? Listen, Listen. To Coach Tobias Graf of uh, Jewel Wallet, who's going to be bringing his uh, crypto debit card to the EOS EVM this fall. Uh, what, what the hell? What? So, yeah, I... I watched a video uh, made by Helios over a developer who has a, uh, a, a ATM card, like a Visa card that can be used for regular transactions, but it, it's based on crypto. And it does all the staking and transfer, does all the stuff in the background to optimize your assets. But anyways, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting news and it's, its intent is to launch it on the Trust EVM or bring it to the trust EVM as soon as it goes live. So we need to make sure that his language translation on his website is adequate. Like I'll take a look at that and talk to him about it if it isn't. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get that thing on there. That's awesome, man. I'm looking at the, the thing now. So we'll say nine, who, 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 who is that? A, that's a, I remember his name. What, what is it again? Tobias Graf, I'll send you the video. Give me a second. What's the last name? G-R-A-F? G-A-R-S or F, F. F or F, F, yeah, G-R-F. F is in Frank? I believe so. Tobias Graf, and what, what is his, pro a debit card? Yeah, let me come to you. Um, so, so Tobias Graf has a debit card coming to EOS that needs tr streamlined for translation, true? Well, no, 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 I don't. I haven't even looked at his website, but I'm just saying, man, he, need to, he better have his, his shit translated to every language. So once it's available for wide scale adoption, that he's not dealing with people who can't read his stuff because they don't speak English. <laughs> so we're the ETF, EOS translation, ETF uh, uh, to explore streamlining translation for it, Stream, streamlining the translation function. Because like I'm looking at his website right now and it looks English only. And oh, another thing, and this is just a side note. Uh, my friend, my buddy Eric, who is a um, coder, he was explaining to me uh, there's a React framework that allows you to publish to basically um, desktop, mobile, iPhone, and Android app all in one development framework. It'll take the same stuff. And I thought, man, that'd be, I, I'm expecting more tools like that to come out in the future. And I'd be, that'd be cool to see where they are with their internationalization and language translation. Get in with them while they're still building it. Yeah. And what is, what are, what are they building? Something that uh, lets you build to all uh, multiple operating systems at once, basically? Exactly. It pushes the same stuff out to a, for a desktop version, a mobile web version, an Android app version, and it, uh, iPhone app version. And is he at all EOS related? Uh, he, he, well, I, I don't even know his background. I just caught it on Helios. There's a link I sent in the YouTube video 
uh, that I watched where he's in a Helios interview. And um, when I was in the Trust EVM group last night, I mentioned this talk because somebody was asking about a, a prepaid debit card. Um, and I go, well, this exists, you know, and so I, that's all I know about it. I just found out about it. This was, this video is only two days old. Well, the technology is really cool and cutting edge for developers. So anything that people are doing that's awesome, uh, they really do want a, a window into blockchain. And translation could be some kind of a surrogate uh, bridge to bring people into blockchain. When we say, hey, we have like translation solutions. Uh, oh, by the way, this is how we do it. And we will fold all your blockchain stuff into this is what we do for our trainers. Just here's our button and da da da. Well, it could be like this can be very. Uh, uh, Great doorway opens doors. The language. Opens yes. Doors. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so, so to users and developers, because what are, what is it? That's gold. So if they have users and developers for, or just developers for like iOS, mobile platform, blah blah blah, then we say, uh, "What's your language looking like?" He's like, "Hadn't even thought of it." We say, "Well, if you want all 20, 40 languages, yeah, he said, yeah." I say, "Okay, good. Now you're plugged in. Literally, you're using blockchain." They're like. So well, could this be good for us in, in a long term? They're going to grow toward EOS, basically. So, you know, but hey, uh, yeah, probably a good time to wrap it up. We caught a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I put that React framework under ambiguous notes at the bottom, yeah, just I'll, whatever. I'll find you a link when I get, get back to it. See you again. I'll you yeah, and I put you on and uh, Oscar on for uh, being able to put comments on this page somewhere. So I don't know how that's going to look, but uh, we can... We did a, a good intro on that. I think we're all smart, a lot smarter. And, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing how this week goes. And uh, Saturday, hey, uh, recommend uh, populate a list on a little note file to reflect uh, during the meeting on Saturday. So you could say, well, okay, here's what we did. Uh, we met to define the scope of uh, the ETF. We had so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. We uh, built toward this and I actually reached out to uh, our own. And, uh, and outside entity. So uh, basically we're, that's uh, good for fractally because blah, blah, blah. And last week I got a three and overall contribution, I've done all this stuff or something. And it's like, try to package that into about one minute and then they'll move on and then you vote and you keep getting tokens that way. But mm -hmm. that's, those, are, those are team funding in the future, basically. <laughs> sure. Cool. But, uh, well, you, peace out, man. Hey, yeah, great talk. Mark. Take care.